Man in his concern for environmental improvement faces many monumental problems. Air pollution from smoke, gas, exhaust fumes and noise. Water pollution from harmful chemicals, acids, minerals, sewage and solids. And the third pollution, land pollution. Land pollution through solid waste, a problem that affects rural America constituting a large percentage of the total American public. A problem that is 99% unsolved, despite the fact that the technology and tools are available for its solution. Land pollution is largely a rural problem because, unlike their city cousins, these citizens have never had tax-supported refuse or solid waste collection systems. Compounding the problem is modern packaging, paper and cardboard cartons, indestructible plastic containers, glass jars and bottles, tin and aluminum cans, furniture, implements, tools and bedding that were once handed down from generation to generation are now discarded after short service. What is to be done with this staggering amount of solid waste? Without regular systematic solid waste service, these rural citizens have taken the only course open to them, disposal on the roadside, on banks, in gullies and ditches, in the edge of woods. These open dumps grow quickly. They start with one carelessly thrown garbage package. Someone adds some cans and bottles, brush, a few mattresses, an upholstered chair, a couple of stoves, a refrigerator, and what was once a scenic bend in the road becomes a blight, an eyesore, a fire hazard that can threaten thousands of acres of adjoining woodland. Raw garbage brings the rat colonies, scavengers, insects, and disease-carrying flies. Bacteria, germs, parasites, and pollutants are washed down by the rains and snows to enter the underground water table, seep into ditches that carry the organisms toward dwellings, springs, wells, and watering troughs. Often the germs are leached out and carried directly into a nearby stream, which is the source of some community's water supply. Twenty-five years ago, such eyesores and health hazards were few and far between. But today, they're starting and growing at an alarming rate, in numbers and in size. Whose job is it to meet this growing menace? If it is to be met, it must be met by the county. The county governments, which represent the rural residents within the boundaries of each county, generally by the County Department of Health, which is concerned with the health and sanitation aspects of land pollution, and by the Department of Highways, which is responsible for the condition and appearance of the county roads, which are being blighted by unsightly dumps. But rural land pollution must become a self-help program involving rural residents, community leaders, county office holders, and officials. Many public-spirited counties have launched successful self-help campaigns to end land pollution and to repair its ravages. Here is a county that decided it had had enough of land pollution. This particular county is typical of many American mainstream counties in that it has an approximate 50-50 split between urban or township population with 50% of its citizens classed as rural or non-urban. Within this county are four urban areas with each of the four having its own tax-supported solid waste collection and disposal system. The remaining residents live on farms in widely scattered clusters and communities classed as rural. This 50% of the population has had no previous solid waste collection service, nor have any provisions for controlled disposal areas ever been made. Under these conditions, the rural population over the years was forced to create and use unauthorized roadside dumps. And as time passed, well over 100 of these unsanitary dumps came into being, creating eyesores, fire and health hazards, supporting rat and insect colonies, polluting water supplies and recreational areas. Many residents and county officials became concerned. The county judge, the road supervisor, the county health officer, civic leaders. These concerned citizens decided to form a committee that would accept the responsibility of meeting the county's land pollution problem. The committee was appointed by the county judge and included private citizens and civic leaders, carefully chosen to represent all sections and population segments of the county. 
This group secured the services of a knowledgeable solid waste expert, a highly qualified solid waste and refuse consultant from the Dempster organization, with a broad background in municipal and county waste disposal systems. Since the highway department was best qualified to operate and maintain a solid waste system, the county road supervisor was appointed to work with the consultant to develop a workable and affordable system that would solve the county's land pollution problems. The first step was a feasibility study by the refuse expert. Working from a map of over 100 known dumps, he visited many sites and plotted rural population concentrations in relation to traffic flow. Routes taken to town, to work, to church, to nearby stores and other destinations. At last the report was ready, complete with initial and operational costs, recommended refuse storage locations, mapped out solid waste collection routes for each workday and a timetable for future growth. After a detailed presentation to the Solid Waste Committee, the decision was made to proceed immediately with the installation of the Dempster County Refuse Collection System. The initial hardware package consisted of enclosed steel storage containers and one 24 cubic yard Dempster Dumpmaster front end loading collection truck which picks up and empties the refuse storage containers. In this system the six yard capacity container was chosen because it most nearly met the average accumulation rate at each refuse storage location based on a twice a week pickup service. The first step in installing a new solid waste system is training the people responsible for operating the equipment. The drivers quickly caught on to the operation of the collection unit. Next came complete maintenance procedures, a checklist of how to keep the dump master in tip-top operating condition. Installation of the system consisted of placing the dump master storage containers while closing and covering the old dump sites. The containers were placed in service at locations predetermined in the survey at heavily frequented places or to coincide with the rural traffic. Some were located at stores, near community clubs, churches, schools, at road intersections, on small secondary roads, or a few feet from major highways. Convenient access was also a factor. for the user and for the Dempster Dump Master truck permitting it to approach and engage the container with a minimum of time and trouble. The Dump Master proceeds on closely pre-timed routes engaging each container, raising it overhead, rotating it and emptying the wastes into the reinforced compaction body. The empty container is then replaced for more refuse storage service. While inside the dump master body, a powerful hydraulic cylinder and packer plate squeeze and compact the refuse to a fraction of its former volume. In this manner, the collection unit can hold the contents of 16 to 20 containers before it goes to the sanitary landfill for emptying. This capacity is remarkable when it is considered that each six yard container holds the equivalent of 40 conventional 30-gallon trash cans or on a twice a week pickup basis 80 30-gallon cans per week. Thus on each trip to the disposal area the dump master carries the solid waste of hundreds of families collected with only 16 to 20 pickup stops. Additionally the refuse in the containers is completely steel enclosed to prevent scattering, reducing fire hazards, discouraging rats, flies and scavengers, and preventing liquids in raw gout from seeping into the water table, wells and springs. While the new system was being installed, the Dempster Solid Wastes consultant and members of the committee were performing another service that is vital to the success of a new system, the implementation of a public education program. Radio stations were furnished public service spots and newspapers were asked to run editorials and feature stories to educate the rural public in use of the new system and to ask for support and cooperation. Members of the committee contacted civic clubs, flower clubs, the Grange, 4-H, 
FFA and other organizations, asking them to make brief announcements at meetings, soliciting support for the new system and distributing information folders. The results were gratifying. Each little community seemed to take pride in its refuse storage station, keeping the ground around the container clean and cooperating in every way possible. This county system is growing. Six months after the initial installation, an additional quantity of six yard containers was ordered. Other acquisitions will follow on schedule. The growth plan is sufficiently flexible to allow expansion of the present collection system. As the county grows and as funds become available, additional trucks can be phased into the system. One expansion option that is available is a compatible system of extra large containers. These huge dinosaur containers can be located beside a ramp or bank and used as large portable dumps for all types of solid wastes. Or they can be spotted throughout the county as collection stations for large, heavy discarded household objects or big tree limbs and branches, even as receptacles for car wrecks. The heart of this system is the truck-mounted Dempster Dinosaur. To pick up a loaded container, the dinosaur is backed up to the container and lifts it into carrying position. For hauling it to the dumping area where the container is tilted and dumped. The dinosaur can also be used as a second small container collection unit by the addition of a dino master unit. The dino master unit is a dump master which has been mounted on a dinosaur container under structure rather than on a truck. The truck mounted dinosaur backs up to the dino master. And in a matter of seconds, the dino master is in operating position, converting the dinosaur to a full fledged dump master, ready to handle any dump master container. With this versatile piece of equipment, the county is ready to enlarge its system efficiently in any direction its growth and needs take it. At this point, the county has made giant strides in eliminating its solid waste land pollution problems. The dump master storage containers are installed and have been enthusiastically accepted by the rural population. Over 80% of the unsightly roadside dumps have been closed and in these places the landscape is being restored to its natural beauty. Soon all will be closed to use. One of the biggest and worst roadside dumps in the area has been closed and covered with dirt fill from across the road. The base has been ditched and filled with refuse and dirt cover. It has been seeded and within a few months a luxuriously green bank leading down to the woods will be all that remains of a bad memory. Thousands of cubic yards of dangerous, disease-infested garbage and solid waste, waste that polluted the land each week, are now taken to the county sanitary landfill area where the refuse is crushed by bulldozers and covered by compacted layers of earth. When filled, this area will become a centrally located recreational area. The road supervisor is going about his work of closing the remaining dumps and making sure the beautiful roads he builds will stay beautiful. The Dempster Refuse Consultant will keep in touch, periodically checking the equipment and future expansions of the system, making additional studies and surveys when needed. The Dump Master, dependably rolling along, day in, day out, keeping the land clean and free of the third pollution, land pollution.